We're in a rally, yes, but how far will this rally go? That's the question and the answer of tonight's video. This is Koya Rosenblum for December 27th, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video. We're talking bounce levels. We do expect this market to continue bouncing a little bit higher, especially as the end of year volatility, option positioning, and otherwise fund rebalancing takes place and bottom fishers or dip buyers come in to push the market higher along with short sellers and bears taking profits. So yesterday and today's sessions did see strong market rallies in a high volatility situation. Volatility certainly works in both directions, but the question is, how far will this market rally? In last night's video, Don talked about the market being under suspicion and five reasons why the market bounce might not be able to continue, but still, it probably does bounce more than one or two sessions before turning the other way. In either way, we'll just look at targets to play for on any type of bounce and how to frame any type of intraday position. We'll see some of them as we go forth, but we're looking now at the S&P 500, and the main thing of tonight's video I want to show you or communicate is going to be this concept of the snapback and the rubber band pull. And that basically just refers to markets that get overstretched away from their moving averages tend to snap back quickly to them. Before we talk about the current environment at the end of 2018, let's first start by talking about the beginning of 2018. So this was a similar push away from our 2880 level all the way to 2640. And we still were overextended on a deep sell-off. Market has to bounce, right? Sure, bounced a little bit, but fell just as quickly. Same logic, market has to bounce, right? Sure. Now, what targets are easy to play for? Simple targets we all can use on our daily charts. That's in all points in time going to be roughly the 20 day exponential moving average. That's the green spot on the chart. I also show the 50 day because that's a little bit longer. That's about two months on average of trading activity. The 20 day exponential is about one month of trading activity, essentially 20 days, one month. And we average those prices together. It has a little weight to the most recent data, but those are targets to play from and toward. So as we go through the year, multiple examples, this little prior sell off into March fall, but then bounce all the way to the 20 and then fall back again. And as we look at other sell offs, same thing almost with very few exceptions, each time the market pierced beneath its 220 and 50 and other moving averages, it had a snap back rally toward the 20 day exponential. That doesn't always work, right? This is back into October with a two day strong sell off and a little one, two, just about a two, three day rally took us just shy of that. But one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven, eight, nine days to the downside, 2600 pushed us right back like a rubber band from 2600 to about 2650. And that could have been a series of intraday trades, swing trades, option premium sold beneath us, as we've been discussing, on the pathway higher. As we push further and further and further away from that 20 day exponential average, it's in the S&P index at about 2560. We'll make it 2550 for easy reference. That is about 50 points, 60 points higher. Can it get there in one session? Probably not. Two sessions, maybe three, four. That's what we're looking for. So we won't go too far into the future in terms of will this bounce fail? We'll just look and see if it goes up toward. And if so, that will be intraday tactics, intraday trades or option positions on the way to the targets. That's the S&P 500. The Dow Mini Futures, just looking quickly at levels, would be about 23,700. The NASDAQ level to watch just from this perspective would be about 6490, or just make it 6500. That's also a price pivot. One other point to reference is as you're looking at these daily charts, incorporate any type of price level that overlaps or trades close toward that 20 day exponential. These are just targets to play for. And this NASDAQ has pushed up away from 5,800, 600, 6,000, all the way to just about 64. And that continuation swing could take us to about 6480 or a little bit higher. 
The Russell is in a deeper pullback. But again, just looking back at January, deep pullback here took us toward the moving average. Multiple examples of that, again, on the October fall, just shy of it here, and into November. The target for the Russell to play for would be about 1400 or just shy of that. Just moving quickly as you look at your swing positions that may be open or managed, any type of puts sold beneath the markets, in-out spreads or call positions played higher on a rally, especially from the 2400 level. That's a wise thing to do in the trading arena. These also play into individual stock positions. For example, Microsoft, we discussed it as a bounce or V-spike candidate. It is went a little deeper than expected, but now is pushing up toward our price pivots, 100, that was our key price to focus, and then 103.50. That is your moving average and price pivots. Facebook, Facebook's already gotten there. So it achieved a rally and is just shy of two things, a falling price trend line and that moving average, just shy of it, roughly 136, 137. Amazon should be interesting. As we mentioned in the prior video, we have these V spike reversals or violent swings or bullish reversals into key price pivots. We fell just a little shy of our 1350 and pivoted up away from 1300. Target for Amazon is going to be just shy of 1550, nearing about 1500. That is upside targets to play for. On Apple, same logic fell just a little shy of our 150 per share pivot, but now looks to be playing up to this moving average. Remember, this moving average will come down a little bit further, playing to about 164. Netflix, another example that we're watching, could play into the 264, 265 level. Again, like Amazon, we had this V spike logic, it's taking place. So all these stocks are bouncing. The market itself is bouncing. Think of it like a rubber band that was pulled and pulled and stretched and stretched and now is violently, quickly snapping back the other way. One example here into October, another one into November, and not surprisingly, the third example into December. We can also look at many, many examples, but for the sake of timeliness, take this logic in terms of pullbacks, snapbacks, or intraday rallies that take us toward daily chart targets. And from that, we can, if we want to be a little bit more aggressive, trade intraday pullbacks such as bull flags or buy calls or buy in out spreads or otherwise positions that take the price up away from support targets, 1300 flags, any type of flag environment could be intraday tactics or just get into option positions or to be the safest, sell distant premium. We we're a little bit behind that because we're already two days into the rally, but the volatility, VIX, Vega, those were inflated. Option premiums were inflated, but these last two days have driven those down as the volatility index has contracted. And we'll finish the video looking at the VIX itself. Now, just looking at it, we don't necessarily do technical analysis or charting or those sort of things on the VIX itself, but just note, as the market fell stronger to the downside, this VIX rose powerfully higher. And if equities keep pulling back, this should be concerning, right? That the VIX stayed put today in terms of the uh, low and the low of yesterday, the low of today's session. Uh, look for it to push toward 26. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. No. But if equities do continue their little rally up towards support and resistance targets, you can see the VIX index pull back to its 20 day moving average or at least the 26 pivot. Again, that's the framework, that's your higher picture. And that gives us clues about what to expect for our trades on an intraday basis as we trade into 2019. Be safe, take care. This is Corey Rosenblum for December 27th, 2018 Theo Knightley video.